Welcome to today's lesson where we're going to talk about some of the organization within a cell. We're going to talk about um, specifically what are organelles, then we're going to look at cytoplasm, and then we're going to take a look at the nucleus of a cell. So let's start with an organelle and what actually is an organelle. The term organelle actually means little organ. And if you think about the organs within our body, each of our organs has a specific function. So an organelle is just a smaller piece of that, okay? Each of our organelles has a specific function within, within the cell that it's in, okay? So we're going to break down over the next couple of lessons, we will be breaking down each of the organelles, what their function is, and what they help our body do. So these are little organs, they each have a specific function within the cell, and a lot of them are going to work together within the cell, just like our organs work together. For instance, we have multiple organs within our digestive system. We have our esophagus, we have our stomach, we have our uh, large intestine and our small intestine, and they all perform a specific different function to help our body to function appropriately. Um, but they all don't form every single function. So organelles have a very specific function that they're going to carry out so that the cell itself can carry out its job that it needs to as a whole. So organelles are our little pieces within those cells. And we're going to get into those in a lot more detail over the next couple of lessons. All right, let's take a look at the cytoplasm. Now the cytoplasm isn't actually considered an organelle. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance and it's left between the nucleus and the cell membrane. So it's this jelly-like substance that's between the cell membrane and the nucleus. And what it does is it takes and it holds all of the organelles into place, okay? What you can think of this is, as is, let's say we had a balloon and we put a lot of little pieces inside that balloon and then we blew that balloon up. If we didn't have something semi-solid to keep those pieces in place within that balloon, they're all gonna fall to the bottom of that blown up balloon because they're gonna sink to the bottom because they're more dense than the air is. So what the cytoplasm does is it allows those organelles to sit at different spots within the cell. And so it keeps them in place, it allows them to function appropriately with other organelles around them, and so that helps the organelles to uh, function the way that they need to, and it helps the cell to function the way that it needs to. Cytoplasm is located in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, okay? So this is one of those things that's going to be in every single cell no matter what it is, okay, it will have cytoplasm. So now let's take a look at the nucleus. So here we have the nucleus. First of all, many of you have heard over the years that the nucleus is the brain of the cell. It's the control center. Basically, it sends messages to the rest of the cell and says, this is what needs to happen. This is what you need to do. This is what, need, this is what needs to be done, okay? So the nucleus is the control center of the cell but it's only located in eukaryotes. And it's the control center of the cell because it contains the DNA, okay? It contains the DNA, so that DNA is what's giving all those messages. Again, only in eukaryotes. If you see a cell without a nucleus, it's going to be a prokaryote. So here's a picture of the nucleus. And I've color-coded some of these pieces. Around the outside of the nucleus, we have a blue structure here called a nuclear envelope or a nuclear membrane. That's just going to contain everything inside. That's going to be the barrier between the cell and the nucleus. Okay, so between the nucleus and the rest of the cell, the nuclear envelope provides that barrier. Now that barrier actually has some dots on it. If you notice here in black, there are some dots and those are going to be what are called nuclear pores. The nuclear pores actually allow things to move in and out of the nucleus as they need to. It controls what goes in and out of the nucleus, okay? but it does allow certain things to go in and out because there are things that need to pass from um, the DNA. We do need to get messages from the DNA out to the rest of the cell and we need to get things out so that they travel through those nuclear pores. 
The green stuff here is what's called chromatin. And for the most part, inside of our cells, our DNA is in long, long strands that might be, that's wrapped tightly, somewhat, around these little things called histones. And so the histones plus the DNA is what's called chromatin. And for the most part, it's just going to be these long strings all throughout the, um, all throughout the nucleus, okay? Only when it's actually going through duplication are we going to see it condense and form those X-shaped structures called chromosomes. So this is going to be our chromatin that's in there. And then finally, there's a circular shape near the center of the nucleus. It's a very solid circular shape, almost like a ball. And that's what's called the nucleolus. And the nucleolus's function is to make ribosomes. Okay, we're going to talk about ribosomes a little bit later. But the function of the nucleolus is to make the ribosomes. And without those ribosomes, our cells would not be able to function. So, to wrap it up, we have discussed exactly what organelles are. We're going to talk about the or different organelles a little bit later. We have talked about structure and function of the cytoplasm and structure and function of the nucleus and all the different parts of the nucleus.